Hey fam and welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So for those of you who are finding my channel for the very first time, my name is Marshawn and I'm your life and relationship strategist. I help men and women alike to create the relationship that they so want, need, and deserve by simply helping them with simple strategies and tips to implement into their relationship so they can create that happy, blissful relationship. So today we're going to talk about how you want to get back in the game after a relationship has ended. We'll talk about it right after this. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back. So before I get into the many tips that I have for you today as far as how to get back in the game, into the relationship dating process, how do you get back into the game after one of your relationships has actually ended, I have to say that now that we are older, we are more mature, we are finding out more about relationships and how to actively go about them as a society, we are learning the tips and tools to implement into our lives before you get back in the game of dating. Number one, do some work on yourself. Because the only way to have a really successful romantic relationship, it starts with you. So if you are not all the way together, if you are not a whole person before you jump into a relationship, and you have not done the work as far as cleaning up all of that old baggage and just getting rid of all of your baggage, guess what? There is still going to be issues in the next relationship that you jump into. So before you do that, and because you have come to my channel, you have stopped by my channel to figure out how to get back in the game. Before you get back in the game, if you have not done any work on yourself with forgiving yourself, forgiving your past partner, forgiving, you know, all of the things that you did wrong, all the things that they did wrong, why the relationship didn't work out. You did some reflective work on why things didn't work out, what you can actually work on um, the next time another relationship comes around. If you have not done any of that, pump your brakes. Look for some of my other videos where I talk about how to do the work on yourself, how to forgive people, how you actually love yourself. Look for some of those other videos and also look for other videos from other YouTubers and other people that you find inspiration from because they are showing and showcasing some of the things that you can actually do so you can eventually get back in the game into that loving relationship with the next person who's actually done the work themselves. Okay, so... I'm now off my soapbox. We're going to jump in in a moment. All right, again, fam. So you've already done your work, and now we're trying to figure out how to actually get back in the game. So the first thing I want to tell you to do is to think about learning how to flirt once again. An easy way to do that because we have a hard time. When things don't work out, we have an extraordinary hard time of getting back out there, putting ourselves back out there, putting our heart on the line to only get possibly hurt again. Well, I can't even say possibly. When you get into your relationship, your heart is still going to get hurt. But it's not necessarily that your partner's trying to do it on purpose. It's just because we are human and we are going to mess up. Okay, so let me just put that out there, all right? You are going to get hurt in your relationship, but it doesn't have to be something that's being done on purpose purpose all right so because we have a hard time with putting ourselves back out there an easy way to do that or i should say an easier way to do that is to sign up on online dating even if you're not ready to take the plunge to say meet up with people outside of the household right you have to get dressed and get out of your pajamas you got to put on some makeup you got to you know groom yourself well before you do all of that but you're still kind of scared join some dating apps and just start flirting with the, with you know with the person that you're interested in. Just start flirting. Put yourself out there at least a little bit, right? So you can see uh, uh, th this is a way to virtually put yourself out there without you having to get dressed and you know actively see somebody in the store or at the gas station or whatever it is. Doing you know you doing recycling. You happen to be a quick way, an easier way to start the flirtatious behavior before you actively have to approach somebody in person, okay? The second thing that you could do is to go out with other single people who you know are also looking to date because then even if you're a little bit awkward with putting yourself back out there, you can see a little bit of the things that your friends are doing that you can you know, emulate and Im imitate later on. 
take only the good stuff or the stuff that works for you and leave all of the stuff that you're like, oh, hell no, I wouldn't do that. Leave all of that. That's fine. You're not going to do every single thing that your friends do, but they'll give you some more courage to put yourself out there even more. So go out with some of your other single people. The third thing is just like I'm telling you, but I want to make it plain. Take it nice and slow. Don't move too fast. Don't jump the gun. Don't just, you know, have on your rose colored glasses. The first person that has started to show you some attention, now you're falling head over heels for them. Just slow things down. Take it one day at a time, one text at a time, one call at a time, just one day at a time. Take it slow. Don't beat yourself up if, you know, you go online and you flirting with people and nobody flirts back because sometimes they're either not interested or they take days to even look at the app again. So there's several reasons why they didn't flirt back with you at least right away. And maybe they never will, but that's okay. This is why you're taking it slow. Number four. I want you to actively listen to yourself. Become self-aware. Listen to what your gut is telling you. If something doesn't feel right, don't just go along with it because. If something don't feel right, usually it's because something ain't right. Might not be able to put your finger on top of what that something's not right is. But if your gut is telling you something ain't right, Something ain't right because that got that gut is actually giving you the knowledge. Okay, we about to bring my shirt into it. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power, but applied knowledge is better. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't use it, then it's useless. So pay attention to, to what your gut is actually telling you. Number six, another way to put yourself out there getting back into the dating relationship game is just to start doing things that you actually love to do. Now, when you're doing the things that you actually love to do, it doesn't have to always be something with the, you know, the, 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 the um, opposite sex having to be there. If you like to go to book clubs and book clubs are mainly women or mainly men, depending on the ones that you join and, you know, the, the sex that you are, um, <laughs> It doesn't always have to be the opposite sex there, but that also will make you even more interesting when you do find somebody else that, um, whether, whether you're going to a co-ed book club or, you know, one where it's all females or all males, um, you'll have something to talk about as far as what are your hobbies, what are your interests, all when those questions come up. Well, I actually like to read books and not only do I like to read them, I actually like to read them and discuss them with other people that actually like to read the same things that I do and I'm in a book club. That is another way to find for where the other person that's listening to that is like, oh, they're actually pretty interesting. So what do you like to read? What is your genre that you're interested in? And that's a way to just really suck them in. Now that, that is if they're into books themselves, right? But that is just an example. Obviously, you might like to do other things and you do those things. I always mention meetup.com because that is a great place to start where you can go. Even if you are in the, a new city by yourself, you can Go on meetup.com and all of the things that you can think of that you like to do, more than likely somebody has a group in your city that is doing that. Sign up for meetup.com, put in, you know, make your profile and then search for all of the types of groups that you are interested in, 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 in doing. Like um, in San Diego, when I first moved out here, like um, I was basically out here by myself. I did have a sibling, but um we didn't hang in the same circles and we didn't necessarily like to do the same thing. So I had to figure out how to put myself out there. And I joined meetup.com and um, I joined a lot of like um, professional black groups and uh, book reading book clubs because I like to do that. Um, hiking groups or they have running groups, they have swimming groups, anything that you can freaking think of. Seriously, they have it. So whatever your interests are, go on meetup.com. So I have plugged them in here several times. Meetup.com. Okay. Another tip for you is to not, I kind of mentioned it already, do not put all of your eggs into one basket, which is why I had another video where um, someone asked me the question, is it bad to, or, well, maybe they didn't use the word bad, but is it frowned upon to date multiple people? And I have that video, and of course, I will plug it up here at some point, and of course, it'll be down in the description box below. But yes, it's, it's, it can be a yes, it can be a no, and the reason why I'm saying it can be a no, and this is what I'm going to insert right here, is because it gives you a chance to, to take off the rose-colored glasses that I mentioned earlier, and to actually see 
what you like about this person, what you do not like about that person, what you like about this person, what you do not like about that person. And you can actually see if they have any of the red flags, which you deem to be red flags that you like. Oh, heck no, I'm not going to take all of that. Instead of just jumping in head first and attaching yourself to the very first person that started to flirt with you, that actually wanted to take you out on a date or that said yes to you um, asking them out on a date, whatever it is. It gives you a chance to slow things down, which is what I mentioned before. If you find interest um, that you are interested in multiple people, you can do different things. And those multiple people can actually um, help you with experiencing new things as well in the city. Again, if you're new to the city, it'll be a great way for you to get out there and, and just really get outside of the house. Because a lot of times when we get older, it's like, I don't want to, I, I, listen, I didn't came home. And some of y'all women, y'all going gonna to be able, gonna be able to understand what I'm about to say. I didn't came home. I didn't snap that bra off and I didn't put on my relaxing clothes. Uh -uh, I'm not getting dressed no more. <laughs> so, so this will be a great way for you to get out and just explore your city. Act like a tourist, whether you are a um, newcomer to the city or not. If you act like a tourist, trust me, you will find something to do. And that's a great way to explore the city with somebody new. And you can explore the city with this one, this one, this one, and this one. Don't get caught up. All of this is just side notes for real. But do not get caught up in only going to the person's house. And I don't even recommend that on the first couple of dates anyway. Because not only do you want to keep yourself safe, you also want to slow it down so you do not inter introduce sex too early. All right? Moving on. For all you newcomers who have been in relationships and just don't understand about this texting thing, texting is the new norm, boo. It's the new norm. Lots of people do not pick up the phone anymore because I could be laying on my couch and I can just hit you back with a text or I can watch my movie and hit you back when I'm done with my movie and you are not interrupting me and what I have going on in that moment. And that is okay. So just realize that texting is an everyday norm. Lots of people do not pick up the phone and as a side note, if you are a phone talker, which I actually am, um, <laughs> and you want to talk on the phone more often, then guess what? You might have to be the initiator. Doesn't matter if you're the girl or the guy. If you like to talk on the phone, you might have to be the one to pick up the phone. And also let the person know, you know what? As much as I understand that we are in the age of technology, texting really ain't my thing. I am going to call you more often than you probably even like. But that gives them a chance to understand what your standard is for that thing. It doesn't mean that you can never text. But if your, if your um, main way that you like to communicate is via picking up the phone, then you probably will have to be that initiator. Doesn't matter if you are the woman. Doesn't matter if you are the man. So just keep that in mind because this, this thing is turning. But I don't know that you like me to pick up the phone and call because I actually like texting. Especially if you've never shared that thing. None of us are mind readers. So you have to share the things and the standards that you want and that you expect out of your relationship. The next thing is to understand that you cannot fix anyone. The only thing, that you, the only thing and the only person really that you can fix is yourself. That's it. Everybody else is at the stage that they are out because that is the stage that you are choosing to be at. You cannot change them. You cannot be fix a hoe. You cannot think that, okay, I, I hate this about ex, about this person, but when we get into a relationship, they're going to change for me. No, they're not. Don't set yourself up for failure. Realize that you cannot change anybody. And if what they are displaying and showing to you does not match up to what you want out of a relationship, push on, sis. Push on, bruh. You can't fix nobody. Now, if you want to be the patient one and wait around for them to get it together, and you also have to realize that they may never get it together. So, you have to be real with yourself. If they never get themselves together in that particular area that bothers you, will you be okay with saying that they are a great guy or a great girl and pushing and pushing, right? And moving the relationship forward. If not, move on. Don't waste your precious time because that's the only thing we can never get back, our time. The last and final thing, sis, bruh, guess what? Be patient. Be patient. Because a lot of times we think that when we meet somebody who actually seems, yes, in quotations, seems to like us, everything is going to go to plan. And sis, 
bruh, especially when you have come out of a long-term relationship and now you thr thrust back into the dating scene and you like, oh, what the hell is going on? It's a process. Just like the, the first time, more than likely, it was a process when you found him the first time. Guess what? Now that you're putting yourself back out here, you've already done all the work. Guess what? It's now a new process, and you got to go through the steps. You can't skip the steps. Because as soon as you start skipping steps, guess what? You're going to end up with old slug. <laughs> Alright fam, so if you made it this far, definitely think about subscribing because here at I Love Me Me Me, I'm supplying you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships. And finally, right before I go, each week I will be rewarding one person with a discovery call, a 30 minute discovery call to see if you and I would be a great fit to actually work together to get your relationship together. And that could be the relationship with yourself or the relationship with, you know, your significant other. And so if you are interested in doing that, every single video that I post, which I post four times a week, you have to make a comment and of course, like the video. And each week I will pick one person to have a 30 minute discovery call. And during that call, you will be able to ask me anything and, and you get three more this week to comment on. All right. And I'll pick one winner. I'll see you guys in the next video. Two fingers salute.